Hey, we got a doozy of a topic this time. We got burns. Burns uh, come in four different types. You've got thermal burns, which are due to heat. You've got chemical, which have to do to chemicals that are damaging to the skin. Electrical, due to electrical shock. And radiation, due to some sort of cause of radiation. Now, how do you determine the severity of a burn? And the severity is very important because this will go into treatment and uh, how bad it is for the patient, what's the risk of fatality. So severity is based off a couple factors here. The total body surface area that is burned. And uh, two ways to measure this I want to point out is one is the rule of nines. And what this is, is you break the body parts uh, up into groups of nine. And you can see here, each arm is 9%. The front of the legs is each 9%. And the back of the legs is each 9%. The head is 9%. Your chest is counted twice, so 18%, uh, and your back is counted twice for 18%. And so this comes out being, of course, 100%. And so you can use the rule of nines. If the entire arm is burned, it's 9%. If the half of the arm is burned, you can range it from 4 to 5%. And so this is a way to quickly assess the TVSA. Also, you can use the palm arm method, in which uh, for each palm size a uh, section of the patient's skin that is burned, that's a half a percent. So if you can use your palm to kind of uh, gauge how much of their skin is burned. Now, uh, mortality is very uh, is much more likely when the TVSA is high, especially greater than uh, 40%. The depth of the burn uh, is also very important. We're going to talk about that in just a second. This is where we talk about first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree burns. The location of the burn is important. If the burn is on the leg, it's not quite as uh, bad as if the burn is on the patient's neck and face because uh, there's a lot of swelling with burns and any burns around the neck or face can cause airway obstructions. Uh, any lung involvement, and this could be due to um, smoke inhalation. Uh, this might not affect the patient right off the bat, but 24 to 48 hours later the patient may develop uh, respiratory issues. And the age, uh, if the patient, uh, the age in general health, if this is a baby or elderly or someone with a chronic issue, they're at much more risk for being damaged or injured by a burn. So let's now talk about the depth of the burn. So here, uh, superficial, also known as a first degree burn, this would be like a sunburn, so the skin is just pink. Partial, uh, a partial thickness burn, also known as a second degree burn, this is when you start to see uh, blisters. Now the skin's still pink, it may come to red, and you're going to see some swelling and it's going to have the blisters. When you get to the third degree and the deep partial burn, uh, it's definitely going to be at least red, ranging all the way up to white, uh, lots of edema, and you're going to start seeing eschar uh, developing on the, on the arm or, or the skin. Uh, when you're talking about fourth degree, you're talking about a full, th uh, full thickness or a deep full thickness. At this point, the, the skin color is going to range from red up to brown to all the way to black. Um, in a full thickness, you're going to see uh, severe edema. The arm's going to be completely swollen with fluids. And we'll talk about why you get this swelling in just a minute. And you're going to have very hard eschar. And when it gets all the way burnt down to deep full, you pretty much got a piece of jerky left. Now, what, are, what causes the swelling? Well, you're having a, a, a lot of... Uh, so, so water in, the, in your blood, the fluids in your blood, are trying to stay with the proteins that are in your blood, but as there's damage to those uh, blood vessels and as there's damage to the cells, what happens is the cells are now releasing all kinds of proteins and there's uh, all those proteins are in your uh, skin and not in your blood vessels and all the damage to your blood vessels, now the fluid is leaking and being attracted by the damaged proteins. They're trying to go to those proteins. And so what you have is called third spacing. This is where the fluids are just going to the body tissues. Now this is bad because this will ca can cause systemic uh, edema because not only is it going to the burn spot, but your body from head to toe is having systemic inflammation and any kind of inflammation can cause edema. So you can have generalized edema, not just in the site of the burn. Now, this is bad because it puts you at risk for developing shock. Now, what are some lives you'll see with burns? You can see here, uh, initially you're going to have a high potassium. Why is that? Well, potassium is found inside your cells. As the cells burst because they were burned, they're releasing potassium into the bloodstream. Uh, however, 
once the body has time to regulate and the potassium has been excreted by the kidneys, you'll find that the patient has a low potassium. Also, you'll see that the hemoglobin will be high initially because you have a lot of blood cells. Uh, it, it, the reason the hemoglobin is high is all the fluid is leaking from the bloodstream into the tissues. Now you're checking the blood, you're not checking the tissues. So what you see is a bunch of blood left over in the bloodstream. So it'll look high, but later you'll see that it's actually quite low once you get them uh, full of fluids again. Also, uh, you're going to see high glucose because of the stress in the body, low proteins. Uh, in the blood because there's a lot of proteins now in the tissues and because they're trying to rebuild the tissues. And you're going to see high white blood cell count because they're uh, trying to fight any infections that are trying to present themselves through the skin. So what is treatment for burns? Uh, first thing is stop the burn. If the person's shirt's on fire, you're going to need to make sure you take any hot clothing off. If there's any bur uh, burning, make sure that's extinguished. If they're next to an electrical, uh, an electrical burn, they're away from the electricity. Uh, you want to make sure you maintain airway because I told you there's systemic edema and that could include in the respiratory system and around the throat and the face. And so this includes making sure you suction out any uh, fluids, especially if you have an inhalation burn. This person may be uh, producing lots of fluids inside of their lungs and so you want to make sure they're able to cough it up, keep the head of the bed up, give them oxygen and make sure you suction out any excretions. They're going to need fluids and there is uh, the Parkland formula. Parkland is a hospital that is known for, uh, for treating burns specifically uh, quite very well and so we have the Parkland formula and I'm not going to talk about that in this video I'm going to have my next video is going to talk about the Parkland burn formula so you can see that in this playlist you're also going to give them so these fluids are so they can uh, maintain their blood pressure because all the fluid is now in their tissues you also want to bring some of those uh, fluids back into the bloodstream with colleagues what this is, is these are thick fluids uh, fluids with lots of proteins, such as albumin or blood, that are going to help to draw the water back into the blood vessels and keep it in the blood vessels so they can maintain their blood pressure and prevent shock. They're going to need analgesics, and uh, they're good candidates for a PCA pump, which is patient-controlled analgesia, in which they can uh, give themselves pain control when they need it. Because they're going to be in the hospital for quite a while healing from these burns. In the meantime, you want to monitor for signs of shock. I told you they're losing lots of fluid in their bloodstream and they're at risk for developing fluid around their lungs. Uh, so you have to make sure uh, cardiogenically, lot, not a lot of fluid in their bloodstream. You want to watch for decreased blood pressures and decreased capillary refill. You squeeze their nails and they stay white. Uh, they're not getting blood where it needs to go. And their urine output is less than 30 cc's per hour. That's a sign not enough fluid to the kidneys. It's a sign of shock and also a decreased level of consciousness. These patients are chronically going to need to be uh, at risk for infection. So you want to prevent infection. Uh, this includes putting them in an isolation. So when you go in, you're wearing a gown. You're not bringing in or taking out. Well, so you're not bringing in any bacteria that you can contaminate them with. Make sure they have their own blood pressure machines, their own vitals machines, your own, uh, a stethoscope specific to the room. Uh, no flowers, limit the visitors. They may need antibiotics and a tetanus vaccine if they, uh, to fight any infections they may have. Nutrition is going to be a big deal. They got a big burn and they need to make sure that they can regrow the skin and the proteins and the muscles. So they're going to need upwards of 5,000 calories a day with lots of protein. And if there's any, uh, if they're unconscious or they're not unable to eat due to uh, damage around the face or the throat, they may need TPA uh, or they may need TPA in conjunction with their oral food. So TPA is going to be parental nutrition, which is uh, going to be going through the IV. And also, these patients are going to need long-term wound care. And we're not going to talk, touch much on wound care, but this is where you see the cool synthetic skin and skin grafts uh, that can be surgically applied. So this is burns, and look in the next video for the Parkland formula for IV fluid resuscitation for burn patients.